Hi, welcome back to LGS Microscopes. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be showing you how to assemble and set up this dual headed stereo microscope station. This is a great system for any time you have two people that need to be looking at or possibly manipulating the same piece at the same time. Now there's quite a few steps to this installation, but I'm going to go through each part piece by piece and once it's all set up you should be good to use it for whatever your needs may be. The first thing we want to do is unpack everything and set it aside nicely so that we can kind of see what we're working with. So in these packages there will be duplicates. Some are the auxiliary lenses and some are the eyepieces. Next we'll unbox the microscope heads. It's all pretty self-explanatory how to get it all out. Here we have the microscope head. Now there's going to be some covers throughout the system that we'll want to remove. We'll leave that on for right now. And the eyepieces also have some covers that of course you're going to want to remove as well. Now also in the case here you're going to find a couple other little goodies. This is a tool for adjusting the focus tension. We have a video all about how to adjust the focus tension, so hold on to at least one of these just in case down the road it needs an adjustment. You will also find in here there's a cover for this head, and these are optional rubber eye guards. They're to protect uh, glasses or uh, protective eyewear. Um, they are optional. Sometimes if you use them, then they'll require a little bit more cleaning, but some folks prefer to use them. All right, now we've got all of our optical components taken out, but let's wait to assemble them until we have the stand put together. So we're going to set these aside, give ourselves plenty of space, and we'll come back to those. All right, next we're going to go ahead and assemble the stand. Now this is the only part that's even somewhat complicated, but I'll walk you through every step. It comes with everything you need. It has these two tools, which you'll need. And now this piece here is the base. This weighs 29 pounds, so be careful when you handle it. Obviously use any safety standards that you have in place. This here is the vertical pole, which you can tell because it's longer than the horizontal boom arm, and it also has the uh, screw in the base. This is the horizontal boom arm, and you can tell that because it has this trough that runs the length of it, and it also has these holes in the end, which are for what's called bonder pins, and I'll go through that as well. Then we have, this is the knuckle, and I'll show you how to use that, and then this is very important, this is the safety drop collar, and I'll show you how to install that as well. All right, so first we're gonna go ahead and install the vertical pole, which we'll use this larger of the two Allen wrenches. And the smartest way to do this, obviously you wanna remove the screw first, set that aside. And we're gonna take the base plate here and tip it up on a side with the hole facing down. We'll set this here and line up the two holes. You can go ahead and feed the uh, screw through here, through the bottom, up through the top, and then we're just going to hold this in place while we install it and just get it somewhat finger tight here and then we'll go ahead and use our tool and tighten it and this one we want to be very very tight so we're going to hold this in place tighten it down right now I'm doing this motion here because it's a little bit easier and then when we get to the end we'll go ahead and turn the wrench 90 degrees and really tighten it down so that's about out of travel right there, so I'm going to turn it and use this end so I can get a little bit more torque on it. Get it in there. This one you want to be very tight, so get it as tight as you can. Alright, that should be good. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and tip this up. Next we're going to install our safety drop collar, and this is possibly one of the most important components, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. So for now, just make sure that this is unscrewed enough that it's not impeding the hole right there for the uh, vertical post. And then we'll just go ahead and drop that down for now and just leave it there. Next we're going to install the knuckle. Now this is symmetrical so it doesn't matter which way it goes on but you just want one side obviously to line up with the vertical pole. And again make sure that your uh, pins here are not impeding the vertical pole. Now we're going to stop this right about here. And then right now we'll go ahead and raise this up. And what this safety drop collar does is that in case this fails or becomes loose somehow over time, it means that the whole system's not going to come dropping down on top of someone's hands or on top of uh, the product or whatever it is that you're working on. Okay, so next is going to be the horizontal boom arm, and we'll use this trough, and that's going to ride this this post right here or this screw rather is going to ride in that groove. So again we want to unscrew it and make sure it's not in the way. And then as far as front to back goes, 
This is your front where you got more space here and then the bonder pins are going to go in the front with your trough on the outside facing here. So we'll slide that in a little bit, make sure that it's lined up with our screw. You should be able to push the screw in a little bit. See now I can't twist it this way, but I can slide it this way. So we'll go ahead and set it right about there, lock it down, and then we'll go ahead and grab our next pieces and that's basically how the stand goes together. Next we'll move on to the custom built piece. Alright, up next we've got this custom bracket which will allow you to mount two heads. And if you look closely on this pin there's two slotted sides. And so what that's going to allow us to do is to lock this in place. So this is what's called a bonder pin attachment and it's going to just go right here in the end. And then we'll take our smaller of the two Allen wrenches that we've included and there's a screw right over here. And we'll go ahead and start tightening that and you'll notice that as we tighten it, because of those flat spots, those keyed parts, that it will get tighter and tighter and now once we tighten it down good and tight, there's no way that it's going to wobble side to side. So that's locked in place. Next we're going to work with our focus blocks and now these will ship leveled fairly flush like this and you'll notice that it travels all the way down like this and it can travel all the way up like that. And we want to set this roughly to the middle of the travel just for setting up. And also, this axis you want to make sure is almost perfectly straight. Just as close as you can get it should be fine. Go ahead and tighten that down good and tight. And then we're going to install this here with a little bit of a tilt. And then we're going to take our smaller Allen wrench and adjust this screw right over here. And tighten it down good and snug. And then we'll take our second focus mount. Again, I've set this roughly to the middle of the travel. Introduce a little bit of a tilt here as well and tighten it down. And now the important thing at this point is to make sure that both of these ru look roughly symmetrical and that will help us later on. So go ahead and tighten these both down. Okay, now that everything is nice and snug and maybe just give it a nice little wiggle here just to make sure, we're going to go ahead and install our, our uh, zoom body heads. So we'll go ahead and set this one here and it'll fit right in. Make sure that these screws are not impeding this hoop here again. And we're going to install these facing this way, which is a little bit different from the other types of stereo microscopes. And then we're just going to adjust these silver knurled knobs here and tighten it down. And we'll install this one and tighten it down the same way. And then we can go ahead and install our eyepieces for both. Take these caps off and they'll slide right in there. Now be careful if you do end up handling these afterwards because they can fall right out if, you're, if you tip the microscope upside down. And then we'll take our auxiliary lenses and these are threaded and they'll just thread right into the bottom of here. Oh, we're going to have to take the cap off. And then these will thread right into the bottom of the zoom body here. They don't have to be wrenched on, they just have to be a little bit snug here. And then I'll go ahead and do the others as well. Alright, the final component for this system is the light source. This is an LED light source, so the bulb should last you forever. It's powered with this power cord here, which is a standard plug, just like any computer or monitor typically uses. And then we have the dual goosenecks, and the way those attach is we'll just pull these out. And you'll notice that there's these little pins here and those want to sit right in these little grooves and we just make sure that our screw is unscrewed enough for that to fit right in there and push it in until you get those pins locked in place and then go ahead and tighten down this screw and then after that we've got these are the focusing lenses for these and I'll show you how those work so you just want to pinch this here and go ahead and slide it right on over and you can just push them all the way down for now we'll do that for both of these once you've got that set up, go ahead and plug in your power cord to the nearest power source. This is the only thing that needs to be plugged in for the entire system. So as long as you've got one plug nearby, you should be fine. I'll show you how these focusing lenses work here. You just grab these little pins and you can move this in or out depending on how narrow you want the field to be. You can also just remove it entirely and have a broad spread of light if you're working on a large area. These are just so that you can focus the light in on what it is exactly that you're working on. So we'll go ahead and 
position both of these to be pointing at the same position. Now as far as configuring the system, it all depends on how your area is set up with the, the best usage of the workspace. This is one very popular way just because it keeps the actual light box out of the way. Some people like to put it on the other side if you've got more space over there, but either way you can position these wherever you want them. There's only one switch on the light, light source, which is right here on the front. Go ahead and turn that on, and then you can turn the brightness up to however bright you need it. Um, just for longevity of the light source itself, whenever you turn it on, make sure that it's down all the way, just so it's not as much of an initial shock to the bulb. Again, it's an LED, so it's going to last for years and years and years, but that's one little tip that'll make it last a little bit longer. Now that we've got the system mostly set up, we can go ahead and start to fine-tune all the little bits and pieces. We did include a larger, longer vertical post so that if you have a taller specimen that you've got plenty of room to move up and down. You just, of course, move this to go up and down. It'll take a little bit of effort to move it up because it is a good bit of weight, but go ahead and loosen it against the vertical column and you can move that up. The important thing, again, is to always be following it with this safety drop collar. We can also move this in and out by adjusting the uh, handle back here and move it in or out. Now you can only go so far before it starts to get a little bit dangerous and you, it might want to get tippy, but the reason why we included a 29 pound base with it mounted in the back is so that you can go quite a ways before this thing wants to tip over. You can see right now that this has already got a good bit of working space underneath here without running into this piece. You could probably go a little bit farther than this. But I would just suggest that whenever you move the boom in and out, that just give this a little test, and if it's kind of tippy, then you might want to pull it back in just a little bit. Now is the final part of getting the microscope system set up. We're going to zero in both sets of optics onto the same focal point. The best way to start is look straight down from the top between the two microscope heads and place your target object right in between the two, as closely to center as you can possibly get. For the sake of this video, we used a camera to look through the eyepieces. However, this camera doesn't see through the eyepieces exactly the same way that your eye does. So for the video, we'll be looking at a nut to center both heads. However, when you receive your system, we placed a silver dot in the middle of one of the caps from one of the eyepieces. You should use this to center both of the heads to be looking at the same exact point. The auxiliary lenses on these microscopes give us a fixed working distance of exactly 252 millimeters, or roughly 10 inches. In order to set the starting point from roughly 10 inches away from the bottom of the auxiliary lens to the top of your subject, you want to set your focus block roughly to the middle, just like we did earlier, and then, use, with the help of a friend, raise or lower this block, lock it in place, and again, chase it to the bottom of, of the knuckle here with your safety stop block. And that means that everything's going to be at the right height to start with. And then once we dial it in, we're going to have about four inches of travel with our focus blocks. So then we can dial it in a little bit more. So what I'm going to do now is first make sure that your diopters are set to zero. And we do have a video on that. I'll put a link in the description for that as well. And that just gives us a good zero starting point. So we're going to support the weight of this first microscope head. We'll go ahead and loosen this twisting mechanism. So now you can see we can twist that. And I'm just going to go ahead and stick this in here so that I can easily grab it when I'm done. I'm also going to loosen this, which will loosen this axis here. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my light. And we already know that the sample that we set down is dead in the middle of both microscope heads. So now all I'm going to do is carefully support this with my hands, look through the eyepieces, and just find it and set it right in the middle of my field of view. You can also zoom in and that will give you an even more accurate set, setting of where the exact middle is. So now that I've got it locked down, I'm just going to keep watching through the eyepieces, go over and tighten down this guy, get it kind of snug, and then I'm going to tighten this one as well. Okay, now that I've pretty stiff. I'm going to go ahead and really tighten both of these down just so they don't move because they really should never have to move from this position. Okay, so now my subject is perfectly in focus. Once you've got your head zeroed in to the middle on both sides, you should be able to zoom in and out with it remaining in the center. 
and the focal point when you focus on the highest magnification you should be able to zoom all the way out and it should stay roughly in focus you may need to adjust the focus just a little bit but right now since we've set everything up properly we're right in the middle of our focus and so if we put something a little bit taller on there then we can always move our focus up a little bit another tip is that if you're typically working on the same surface you may want to lower the focus all the way down and then set your boom arm to that focal length and that way your samples are only going to get taller and so then you have this entire focus travel to go up which is about four inches of travel so you could focus on something from the table length all the way up to four inches above it the last step of the process is to simply repeat that last step with this head again always making sure to support this so that nothing falls down and comes crashing down it's not very heavy it's just a matter of holding on to it well that about does it for this assembly and setup if you have any questions along the way please feel free to call us at 623-240-2232 or you can email us at info at lgsmicroscopes.com now this is a custom system that has never been built before and we do a lot of systems like this for people who have unique or interesting types of needs for their specific setup. If you have one of those situations, feel free to reach out to us and we'd be happy to help. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.